Hi, good afternoon, good evening to some of you and uh, good morning. Um, I realise that we've got uh, people where it's uh, very late at night and very early in the morning, so thanks to everyone for um, joining us this afternoon um, uh, where I am. I'll just go over um, a couple of what would normally be where the fire exits are um, and general housekeeping before we get started and, um, and wait for everyone to join. So welcome to the next webinar in our Back to the Lab series. There are some other webinars that are available on the Protein Tech website um, if you want to have a look at them and pass them on to any of your colleagues. Um, we're now seeing more people getting back into the lab. So we've made a series of webinars just as little refreshers um, at, at this time when more people are starting to work from home um, as well as uh, the less people in the lab at any one time. Um, you will be able to see um, a questions tab. Um, I'm afraid I'm the only one with a microphone that works. Um, so uh, there is a questions tab there if you want to ask any questions as we go along. There is also a handout available that you'll be able to see um, in the list there that you can download. Um, and you can also see my email address there, fiona at ptglab.com, if there's anything that you want to ask on a one-to-one -one, um, or any downloads that you want me to send through to you, just feel free to get in touch. So just a little bit um, about me before I start talking about the cytokines and growth factors. I joined Protein Tech last year following the completion of our um, facility in Chicago. I've got a background in regenerative medicine and um, have worked in commercial roles for um, probably longer than I wish to say, but more than 15 years. Um, and I cover the humankind range for Europe. Um, my colleague Erica Howard um, does a similar role in the, and is based in the US. She covers North America and is the humankind specialist um, out there. So today I'm going to talk about the advantages of human expression, expression systems for recombinant proteins and why you should give a heck. So Protein Tech, just as um, a sort of synopsis of the company, is an original manufacturer of antibodies, proteins and ELISA kits. It was founded by Jason Lee in 2002 as a spin out from the University of Illinois. He really wanted better quality antibodies, um, and if you if you ever meet Dr. Lee, you will find out that um, the only way of him getting those good quality antibodies was for him to make them himself. At a similar time, Humanzyme was also spun out of the University of Illinois, and they took the decision to only use human cell expression systems right from the start. Um, so whereas other people were um, going along the line that we normally go on in biotechs, where we start off in bacteria and work up to mammalian cells, and um, they made the decision to use the information that we had and just start in human systems um, as we meant to go on. It became an almost natural acquisition in 2018, and Protein Tech immediately focused on the GMP manufacturing of um, recombinant proteins at the facility in Chicago and in the background of this slide you can um, see the manufacturing facility there. So humankind products um, are recombinant proteins including the cytokines, chemokines, growth factors and interleukins. Um, as we go on today you will hear me refer to these as recombinant proteins or simply as proteins, but I'm talking about all of these products um, here um, from cytokines through to interleukins. Other products that are in this range are human serum albumin, which is almost um, or often used to reconstitute the lyophilized products, authenticine ELISA kits and neutralizing antibodies. On to the HEC293 expression system. Recombinant proteins are made in a variety of cell types, um, in E. coli, in Chinese hamster ovary, and um, also in HEC293, which is what all of the humankind proteins are expressed in. Humankind proteins are expressed using stable HEC293 cell expression systems. As I say, there are alternative expression systems like um, mammalian ones in hamsters, bacterial 
and insect cells. Also, yeast can be used for recombinant proteins, but really as we develop and move away, um, HEC293 cells are being used more and more. This ensures that the proteins um, are authentic proteins and have native conformation and post-translational modifications. Um, they're carrier free. Um, and as you can see in the colored tabs at the bottom here, they have um, almost natural qualities of being animal component free, endotoxin free, xeno free and tag free. But I'll go on to talk about that a little bit more later. Advantages of the HEC293 expression system is that they are authentic human proteins that are made by, the, by those human cells with optimised biological activity. It's developed for um, the advanced therapy medicinal product manufacturers and regenerative medicine marketplaces. The, they are manufactured in GMP conditions and as our RUO and GMP products are manufactured using the same process and in the same facility, there is an easy transfer from um, using RUO in development to um, GMP at tech transfer. So the advantages of proteins that are expressed in human cells um, above and beyond them being authentic human proteins is the, the native folding and maturation. So although Cho and insect cells are eukaryotic, their ability to process human proteins does not match um, the human cell in many cases. Native human glycosylation is crucial to stability and activity. So Cho and um, insect cells have vastly different machinery for this process. Um, so they produce a glycosylated species that's really quite different from humans. High stability, due to that glycosylation and maturation, the human cell express proteins can outperform other systems. In terms of stability, um, particularly where they are heavily glycosylated, that makes a huge difference um, to the stability. All of these features synergize together to create proteins that tend to have higher activity than those that are produced in Cho and E. coli cells. And also with consistency, there is um, less lot to lot consistency um, and it's really predictable the consistency that we're going to get in terms of yields as well, especially compared to, for example, transient cell lines. All of these recombinant proteins are expressed and purified without tags, follow a strict animal free and xeno free policy. These products are produced aseptically in human cells, so they are virtually naturally endotoxin free. Although these um, tests are very stringent and the levels are recorded for all our data. And there's minimal um, risk of any endotoxin levels. The final product doesn't contain any constituent that's either an animal tissue body fluid or a component derived from it, for example, fetal calf serum. Um, all the materials from procurement to final products are stored and handled in dedicated animal-free facilities. And the final product of process don't involve the use of any non-human animal sources or recombinant materials from non-human animal sources either. The inclusion of a tag can often result in changes to the structure of the protein of interest. So for example, there are no HIS tags on these proteins. It sometimes a tag can interfere with the active site of the protein, so it's an altered biological activity. And the presence of a tag can also increase the immunogenicity of some of the proteins. So a tag-free protein is really more desirable for in vivo applications. Here we can see an example of um, human versus bacterial expressed TNF-alpha. So this is a mass spec comparing the molecular weight. And you can see that the authentic human TNF alpha is a 51 kilodalton mass. This is because it's a trimeric protein, whereas the E. coli TNF alpha is a third of the molecular weight. Here you can see the same products, um, a HEC293 express TNF alpha in blue versus an E. coli express TNF alpha in yellow. And you can see here the higher activity of the human express protein on the efficiency of IL-6 production in these are in rheumatoid synoviocytes. And you can see that the concentration of TNF alpha um, can be reduced to um, a fifth of what it is in the E. coli derived if you're using a human kind. Um, product to get the same sort of activity. 
And this could have um, an effect on reducing the cost of goods in manufacturing and the, the quantities of cytokines that are required. Here onto um, a specific product, this is um, Thermostable FGF Basic, which is stable for three days at 37 degrees. So it avoids um, having to feed cells at weekends. Um, FGF Basic or FGF2 is um, a normally essential component in um, any cell culture. It will be an additive in complete media. And it is shown here um, as a standard product in the blue lines and as the thermostable product in the red line. And you can see there that um, there is still FGF basic or thermostable being detected at day three. This just gives an example of it used in um, real life, where um, you can see that the HES colonies in the first and second pictures, um, showing the nanog expression in the second picture there, are maintaining pluripotency using FGF basic thermostable in a two-day feeding protocol. In the third and fourth pictures there, day two and day six of an IPS culture, is the same sort of expansion that you would expect to see using a one-day feeding culture when using a two-day feeding culture. Because of the product development and using stable HEC293 cell lines, it allows significant advantages in yield and predictability. So that means using a HEC293 expressed protein means that there's efficient scalability there in the background to be able to move from preclinical to clinical and commercial quantities. We also have a very simple supply chain map, which means that we have easy communication back the way as well. Our products are as standard um, lyophilized and glass vials. However, we're flexible to fill and finish in different formats. Um, for example, where glass vials are, are not allowed in clean rooms and we can also do custom volume requests where perhaps as standard, um, we don't offer the same size as you have already been using in your process. Here we are looking at the GMP process. As I said, this is the same as the research use only process. There are just um, lots of quality check arrows on the route. So raw materials are um, checked coming in. The product, the proteins are then expressed in the HEC293 cells and purified from the media. There are then an abundance of potency, purity, purity and safety tests going on. Um, before obviously fill and finish and then storage. Um, there is um, trace it, full traceability and quality checks um, on the way to the final documentation that is released with the products. We tend to store at minus 80, um, but the products can be stored anywhere between minus 20 and minus 80. And as a lyophilized product, um, they are stable for an amount of time at ambient temperature as well. This is our GMP facility that you saw uh, looking down the other way, in fact, in the picture earlier on. It was opened in June last year, so it was a really quick turnaround from the acquisition to being able to have this facility opened. It's staffed by the um, same people that have been with the processes since it was um, human sign, and they are really knowledgeable about the products um, and flipping them to GMP as well. They also set about working on SOPs and batch records uh, straight away to be able to have these ready to manufacture to GMP. And we were able to achieve our ISO 13485 certification um, within nine months of the, of the lab opening, um, which particularly during lockdown was no mean feat. Um, so we are now able to offer GMP products using the process shown before. And this is where we fit into the advanced therapy manufacturing process. So a recombinant protein is an ancillary reagent, which is why the ISO 13485 is an appropriate um, and necessary certification to be able to use these products at GMP. And just to go into that policy in more detail, these HEC293 Express proteins are ISO 13.4 certified GMP ancillary materials. So they can be used in a clinical manufacturing process. And as this official statement, um, in not so many words, it means raw materials are qualified, regular checks and qualification of clean rooms, instruments and equipment, 
We have validated processes and SOPs, validated assays, um, well-defined standards and in-process quality checks. We've got systematic and organised training programmes for personnel, documentation and traceability, um, as I mentioned before, and deviations and CAPAs are all recorded and acted on um, in a timely and efficient manner. Just to look at the differences in more detail between the research and GMP version, as I said, they're manufactured um, in the same facility, so they can be used for the um, development and then into then the tech transfer into a GMP product under the same QMS. Endotoxin, um, as I've already mentioned, they're endotoxin free. Endotoxin testing is the same for um, a research product and a GMP product. The change controls are there. We're using the qualified equipment, um, the same analytical methods, although obviously they have to be validated at a GMP level. And we have stability studies um, ongoing for, for all of our products and are happy to share any stability data that, they, that may be required. Obviously, we have to do anyone that's um, working in any GMP manufacturing will know we have to do the, the validation three batches of, of each product. That means that these the GMP products are compliant, whereas the RUO ones are not. Um, and they're in compliant with the US pharmacopoeia. In terms of ancillary materials, in most territories are the same and the um, US pharmacopoeia seems to be um, gold standard um, through the FDA. So just to sum up why you should give a heck, human proteins by human cells for human applications. It makes sense. They have higher activity, stability, and these together, um, could help reduce the cost of goods. They're endotoxin free, tag free, animal component free, and xeno free. So they can be used in manufacturing of therapies for humans. There is an ease of uh, tech transfer from RUO to GMP. And even though it might not sound like it by putting all these things together, they're competitively priced against other expression systems that are in the marketplace. And we're really happy for you to contact us for a quote to see the price differences there. And I'd like to thank you for your time. And I will welcome any questions that you can type into the questions box. And I can look and see if there are any here. Um, although you're very welcome to note down my email address, fiona.ptglab.com, um, and drop any questions to me directly. Okay, so I can see we might have had some technical issues, um, so I apologise for any technical difficulties there may have been with sound fading as well. Um, please feel free to ask me for any clarifications. Um, we will have this session recorded as well. Um, thank you for asking, and it will be available on the website in the next few days. Um, it will, we can also send it to you directly when we have that link there. Okay, so that's all the questions I can see at the moment. So with that, I will thank you for your time this afternoon, this morning or this evening. Um, and please feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions um, on anything that I've talked about today. Thank you.